Hello anyone and everyone, I am Echo and today we are exploring abduction. We're here in uh, Farley's house, had to remember her name. We're here in Farley's house where we just got a uh, map of the area with all the different connecting teleportation points. We've got this symbol over here which looks like the uh, Mofang thing, I, I think it's the Mofang. It might be either the Mofang or the some, something else. One of the alien races. And then we got a whole big uh, bunch of lore dump. We've got like uh, some notes from the first people who came here uh, contacting the, uh, you know, or, or talking about how they showed up. Uh, and then information on all the different types of seeds, like the mother seeds and the ambassador seeds and blah, blah, blah. And all the different species of animals in that one over there and then this one about them trying to communicate with all the different aliens one of the aliens being I, I can't remember the name of them right now uh... aliens that uh... talk to them through a really complicated number system so um... this thing looks like a projector and sure enough has a button on it oh and we can turn it as well Okay. Cool. So I guess that's what we'll look at next. Let's turn it so it's pointing at the map. Okay. Um, you know what? Hey, look at that. Can unlock that cursor. Try to line it up real good. Alright. What's it pointing at? That is... Um between the tower and the train yard or rail yard I guess uh, that's that looks like that uh, that'd be where the door is that we couldn't get through earlier the the locked door that's like up the stairs to the right of the train yard I think that's what it'd be and I don't suppose pointing this anywhere else helps doesn't seem to. But we'll check just in case. Nope. Okay. Let's put it back on that then. And let's see. There's a second thing in here. So we can switch those over, I assume. Yeah. Hey. That's cool. Oh, and our character doesn't have a shadow. Oh, no. That means this is the worst game ever. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm talking about a game called uh, Singularity. I don't know why, but for some reason back when that game came out, a lot of people made fun of it for the fact that your character didn't have a shadow. If you stepped in front of lights, you didn't uh, display a shadow on the wall behind you. And for some reason that was a sticking point with uh, everyone, professional video game critics and everybody else all included. I don't know why, just everybody kept ragging on that one point. Oh, your character doesn't have a shadow. Game's horrible. Okay, so what... Oh, this, is, this isn't this is for that. This is for the numbers. Obviously. Because if you couldn't tell by the fact that it's, uh... You know... Slanted. This is to remind you. Hey, look. It's it's got the things on it. Oh, and I guess it also actually helps with lining it up because it's not exactly in the middle like I would have assumed. Okay, that's cool. Um, I'm not gonna bother writing that down because I think my memory is good enough to remember exactly where it goes. And we will come back. There's obviously more to Farley's house to look at, but I'm gonna come back to that in a moment because I want to go put this number in first. Um, also, general news real quick. Uh, I did recently move into my new apartment, like I mentioned, and uh, so unfortunately I don't know when this video is going to go up. It might go up a bit late. There might be no videos for a week or so before this one goes up, or maybe only a couple videos or something. I don't know. Um, Point is, though, a lot of stuff happened. I haven't had much time. And also, um, in particular, with the Final Fantasy VII playthrough, 
to be honest, abduction is what I want to play right now. So in the limited time that I do have, I really would rather just be playing abduction rather than uh, Final Fantasy VII. So until abduction's finished, uh, you know, unfortunately, might uh, you know might be a bit slow with the Final Fantasy. But I'm not giving up on it or anything like that. Don't want to uh, worry anyone. Okay, so... It should, according to the way it was lined up before, this should be able to connect to a dot right here that doesn't exist. Um... Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Let's unlock that cursor. Yeah, so that's not gonna work. Because there is no dot here. And also, these two won't connect on their own for some reason. So the way that was lined up doesn't uh, doesn't make any sense. So let's enter zero again. Come on. Zero it out, you stupid thing. Fine, how about that first, then clear that, then enter. There you go. Good thing. Good machine. All right. Now, let's try it the regular way, like that, alright, and then put that in, and that shows us 406, which is quite possibly what the number is supposed to be, alright, put the notebook down there without knocking everything off my desk, please, Jesus, alright, so, oh wait, they auto-corrected, so that can't be it. It changed the symbol. There is no number that is that looks like a 15 slanted. Crap. Okay. Um. Well, what are we gonna do now? Hmm. Let me try. Oh wait a minute. I just remembered something. Didn't they? Okay, well, first let's try entering this and see if it. Yeah, auto corrects to something completely different. Okay. That's no good then. Um, in a note somewhere, I think it was this one. Where does it say? The Valane numbering system. Valane, that's the name of the aliens. Valane. Numbering system is base 4, drag, blah, blah. Drag between blobs to disconnect. The standard panel has five digits, but single digit panels are also used. Only the first digit simulate a one digit panel. Zero, 03 all panels will autocorrect for invalid entries um yeah this part about the standard panel has 5 digits but single digit panels are also used so jeez that i mean this is more than 5 and it's obviously more than 1 um but i'm wondering cuz that's it's it's three by three, or if you count the outer thing, four by four, I guess. Technically, it, oh man, this is confusing. This whole stupid thing. So basically, what I'm thinking is is maybe there are different panels that are bigger and have an extra row around them, and maybe with those extra panels, we would be able to complete the sideways five shape here you know because for now we can't do anything with that um so yeah i don't know i don't know what we're gonna do with that have no clue so let's go back to marley's house and uh, i'm gonna take one more look at the projector with uh with the, you know, sideways 15 thing on it, and make sure that I've got it lined up correctly and everything, because, honestly, it doesn't doesn't make any sense the way it currently is. So, ugh, I don't know. I don't know. Alright. Right here, let's look at it. So it is... Yeah, and even on this, even on the... 
projector thing here. It, sh it, it shows that there's no dot here for this to connect to. Really, honestly, kind of confusing. Um, let me try turning it because the numbers around the sides do. Uh, um, hmm, hmm. They're not the numbers. I mean the the lines around the sides. Let me walk up and demonstrate these lines here these ones here that are around the edges and then those ones there that are around the edges those should be lining up better because the way I have it before the way I had it just like this where it looked like it it fit those lines are all off-centered Um, this looks more correct, but if that's the case, then, hmm, let me see, this, this looks more correct, with the lines actually lining up, but then what would the numbers be? Would that mean you connect this one to that one, then that one, then that one, then that one, and that one? And no, that, but huh. these two to this one to the hmm. This really honestly makes n no sense to me. Cause now the now the lines are in between the numbers. What if it's... What if it's actually supposed to be like this? No, because that's still not lined up correctly. Jeez. I don't know, I'll have to think about this one for a while. Um, is this a switch? No, okay. It looks like a switch. I guess it's not. I guess it's just a loose piece of the support beam. It's probably, uh, well, it's actually probably like a thing you pull to loosen the clamp on this or whatever to pull it all down, but obviously we, there's no purpose to doing that so we can't interact with it. Anyway, getting off track. Uh, yeah, this would imply that there's like a way to cross in between them or something to go in between the numbers? I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe we'll find a note or something that'll explain it a bit better. Here's another book. Do we read this one already? Um, no, we did not. Okay. Welcome to Hunrath. Please give us a bit of information about you so we can get to know you a little better. Name, date, uh, date you came from. Please use four digit year. Where you came from, country and city. Circumstance under which you were taken. Please note any dangers you noticed. Emptied and filed. Blanked out again. Samuel Karen, February 2017. Manakara, Madagascar. I had just arrived and was driving my supply truck along the coast south of Manakara when I recall being washed away and the seat appeared. Uh, 15.257 male 61. Oh, is this uh, like his height or something, and obviously male, 61, age, 61, okay. Um, so riding something, 1942, March, Lübeck, Germany, the last thing I recall is a large rumbing, rumbling while I was hiding in the cellar of a vacant something or other. Okay, so obviously 1942, Germany, it was uh, right at the start of World War II, so he was uh, right near the start, I should say, so he was probably hiding from Nazis or something and the tank was coming to blow him up and this guy got washed away by uh, some water like a tidal wave or something that hit because he was he was driving on the coast of Manacara Maria Gallego Cotamel, Mexico on my boat and bad storm mm -hmm. 
uh, something something, can't read that, March of 2042, Portland, United States of America, skiing Mount Hood. Okay. Yeah, so she was on a boat in the middle of a storm, he was skiing, and was probably about to get into an accident. It seems, it, obviously, the people who lived here, uh, and I believe we read an earlier note where they uh, theorized about this as well, but yeah, it seems the Ambassador Seeds went and uh, ha have focused on picking up people who were in life-threatening situations and basically saving them right before they would have died. So that's cool. Oh, awesome. We unlocked it. Opened the door. Now we got a shortcut back and forth through the place. Oh, that thing's going to drive me crazy until I figure it out. All right. Poker. Uh, oh. Hey, it's a little set thingy. Okay. Cool. Let's play this. Nothing? Okay. Let's, uh, rewind the tape. Okay. I don't know if it'll rewind anymore. Alright, let's try playing it now. Well, I, I feel like I should... I should say something. We... we haven't heard from Shavar. So... We assume that um, Sh uh, Shavar, well, that the, the attack is inevitable. It's we we just don't know when. So um, Shavar and her family um, and others she trusts, I guess. Well, they'll they'll arrive when they can um, when they can without um, giving you know like uh, covertly. Okay, and then I believe it's just silence for the rest of it. So yeah, um, apparently Shavar, something happened to her, it sounds like, but she's not dead because um, Farley made it sound like Shavar and her family would be coming back when they could, when they could come back without being spotted. Um, she definitely didn't make it sound like just Shavar's family was coming and Shavar wouldn't be making it. So Shavar seemed to have lived through whatever happened, but 
uh, you know, they seem to have, you know, so- something something bad happened. Something bad happened to Shavar, or Shavar did something bad, perhaps, and it got them all into trouble, and whatever the hell happened, um, ended up kicking off the whole little war doohickey that they had. And she went to Marae, which is a different place, um, I'm assuming it's another area we'll be able to go to. I'm assuming that this game, like all the Mist games, will have its own different, uh, spheres, which would be the equivalent of ages in the Mist games. And, uh, well, what else did she say that was relevant? Oh yeah, she also said CW would be staying here, and she, she talked about him as, basically, as an ally. You know, he'd be staying behind while everybody else would be leaving, um... So I guess CW actually can be trusted as long as Farley can be trusted. I, I, I take this as pretty good confirmation because I don't think she'd be talking about it in the same way. I don't think she'd be saying just so nonchalantly CW will be staying here if uh, if it wasn't for the fact that him staying here was you know pretty much a good thing. Oh hey a little uh, little duder. There's a little weird bear-looking thing. Anything on its butt? Nope, nothing on its butt. Okay, cool. You rock, bear. You rock. All right. There's a thing. I have no idea what that is. It looks like a. Can't zoom in. I gotta. I gotta say, I really wish this game had a zoom in feature. If it does have a zoom in feature and I'm missing it, then I'm an idiot and I apologize. Um, yeah, so it seems like children's drawings of the various aliens that they've met, most likely. Uh, and some of them are wielding weapons, which could be just a child's imagination being like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if it had like a big spear with three pointy bits on it and he could throw fireballs in his hand or something? Or maybe you know, the kid ended up seeing some of the battles or something? No, that wouldn't make sense, because they all left. They all left Hunrath before the battle really began, by the sounds of it. I don't know, maybe. Anyway, that thing, I don't know what that is. No clue. Kind of reminds me of... It looks like it might be like a sky view of the big tower with the, uh... The, the one that's in the middle of the lake with all the stuff surrounding it. Maybe, but I'm not sure why a kid would want to draw that, or how they would know at all what it looks like from up high. Alright, there's some more important stuff. Ooh, hey! My brother, uh, small and nice, sings constantly, as noisy as a rock concert, if only he would be quiet. Okay. I'm guessing that's a childhood fo- photo that's probably Farley as the little girl in the picture. It's probably something she was able to bring with her somehow. Or or it could have just been children who lived here, maybe. I guess they, may they could have gotten a camera from the uh, Mofang. Alright. Find planets with similar atmosphere. Seed pair. Swap. Tree from seed. Uh, there's a picture of the seed. Okay, so Earth, Soria, which is where the Mofang come from, supposedly. Heart. Heart, connected, path open, when mature. Heart, superposition, four species meet. What happens at fruition? Swap where, home, when, maybe dead. More seed pairs scattered throughout the universe. Why scattering? Okay. So this all just seems like theorizing about how the, the process of the seeds collecting people works. Hmm. <clears throat> Heart connected path open when mature. So. Yeah, and as you see from this diagram, it seems the heart one is uh, the only one that's connected to all the others. The red one would be Soria. Oh wait, Earth is also yellow. Never mind. Okay, so the colors aren't important. <laughs> but, um... 
Yeah. So whatever, when the path is mature, we should be able to access heart, which would be another area, I guess. Um, also, all of these planets have a little symbol on them. So let me just jot that down real quick. Whoops. Drop in the pencil everywhere, because I'm real great at this crap. All right. So just four circles. And then horizontal line in the top and the bottom one. And then vertical lines for the other two. Cool. Okay. So that might be important. Um, we might have to do something like that. Because, yeah, by the looks of it, I mean, I don't know. I might be reading too much into this, but by the looks of it, we have to go to each of these three areas, and I presume we're already in one of them, and do something there, and once we've done all of them, it'll open up the path to the final area, which would be heart, I, su I suppose. I guess so. All right. Cool. And I have no idea if the lines drawn on them are important at all. I'm just assuming it looks important. It looks vaguely important, so I'm gonna assume. Alright, we still don't know what the hell that is. <sighs> hmm. Because it, it, when it's lined up like this, with the lines in the corner lined up presumably correctly, then it it's, it's not even possible to to imagine how these would connect like because this line's going between them does that mean these two have to connect and then these two have to connect or something and then those two and then that and that or something like i mean maybe let me you know what let me try that let me because it, if it's saying if it's saying that you have to connect um between the the stupid line things okay let me Draw the diagram out again. Oi. Alright. All the little dots all over the freaking place. If it's saying that you have to connect where the line is going through, then you'd have to connect the bottom one right here to the one that's outside the thing and then to the other one that's outside the thing and then also connect it up to the top right one connect the top right one to the middle one and to the top so like this this one right here would be connected to that and to that and to that this one right here would be connected to that and that and that and then these two would be connected, as well as these two, perhaps? Maybe that's what it means? Um, I'll go back and try that real quick, and while I'm at it, I'm also going to uh, try to remember to see how those corner lines are matched up. And, uh, you know, see if the... You know, because that should help us with lining up the entire diagram correctly and if we can't figure that out then we're SOL basically um, yeah you know, after that I guess the only thing left to check would be um, going through different paths in the teleportation shield around the edges that we haven't tried yet so this thing doesn't even have... Does it show on here, perhaps? Nope. This thing doesn't even really have the, uh... The corner lines on it. So, that doesn't really help. Great. Awesome. Okay. Alright, well, let's try this. Crying out loud. Thank you. Like that. Okay, let me double check with the diagram I wrote down. Looks correct. Alright. And then that to that. And then that to that. Nope, completely wrong. Okay, never mind. 
Um. Wait, they. No, connect these two to get break them. Break. Oh, screw it. All right. Get that thing out of here. All right. Let's uh take a look. Uh, you know, okay. Hold up. Actually, yeah. I already said the next thing I was gonna check was the all the different wall doohickeys. So, where have we not been? We have not been up at the water source, which connects to the lake tower back there. Obviously, we can't access either right now, so we'll need to do something else. Then, the wall connects to the wall. And then, uh, hmm. Okay, I know where we're going next. We'll go up that way past Farley's house and go through the wall over there because that should take us to the other side of the river past a door that we couldn't get through earlier. So we'll do that, but we'll do that next time because I'm out of time for this episode, unfortunately. So hope you all have enjoyed it. Hope you will continue to enjoy it. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.